All right, our next tag is going to be the link tag. We're gonna look at the anchor tag, which is what it's called, and that's how you create web links. So I'm gonna delete all of these structural tags we've been working with, and let's create the first link tag. Now the link tag is called an anchor tag, and it's simply A. And this tag is one of the tags that has our first set of attributes we're going to be looking at. So the first attribute is called href, or href, equals, and then I'm just gonna leave a blank space or do a pound sign, a pound sign in here for now. Um, and then I'll put the anchor text and then I'll close the anchor tag. So again, here we have an attribute href and then equals and then the value goes in between the quotes. So the value right now is just a pound sign, which is just really nothing. So let's uh, save this and jump back to our web browser and refresh. And you can see that anchor tags or link tags turn blue by default and they get underlined. And when I hover my mouse over them, I get this little mouse pointer. And when I click on the link, it should take me to wherever that link is supposed to. I did a pound sign, which is why it didn't go anywhere. This is an invalid link. But you can see one of the properties of link tags is as soon as you click them, by default, they turn purple, which means that I've already visited that link. So the anchor tag, is how you define links. They can be links to web pages within your own website, or they can be links to external web pages on other websites. Now, before we get too much into the link tag, we've got to talk about this path inside of here, or the, the page that we're trying to link to. Now, the actual value inside of here is going to be one of two things. It's either going to be an absolute path, which means it's a it's a complete web address like http colon slash slash www.google.com or it's going to be a relative path which just means it's going to link to a page on your own website. Now the difference between relative paths and absolute paths is really difficult to wrap your head around when you're starting out. Students seem to struggle the most with this topic and it's kind of one of those things that once you get it, all of a sudden it makes sense. So I'll try to briefly explain the difference between a relative and an absolute path as it pertains to the web. It's a little bit more complex when you talk about relative paths on a file system, on a computer, like your C drive or something like that. Um, but we'll kind of explain it in the context of the web. All right, to explain this, I'm going to type just a few notes here in the HTML, and this will be a good time to introduce what's known as an HTML comment. Occasionally, you might may want to write a simple note inside of your source code to remind yourself what a particular section of code is supposed to do. And you can do that with HTML comments. And their syntax is a little bit goofy, but it's a angle bracket, exclamation point, and then two dashes, and then two dashes, followed by the closing angle bracket. And then inside of here, is a comment. And you can see how my particular uh, text editor is making this entire line gray, which tells me it's a comment. Now, if I was to save this and come back and refresh my browser, notice how that comment line doesn't appear anywhere. It's not visually in my document, but it still is in my source code. There's my comment right there. So comments are a way that you can kind of add notes and comments to yourself inside of your source code. Um, and I'm going to leverage that feature to just type a few notes here about relative and absolute paths. So I'm going to hit return here a couple times and uh, tab down there. So everything in between these two things will be a comment. So you can think of, we're going to start out with absolute paths. Um, absolute paths are the easiest to understand and they're like a um, address. We can think of a Think of a absolute path like a physical address to a house. Um, an example on the web, or if we keep with this analogy, an example might be one, two, three, Pennsylvania Avenue, or something like that. So that's a physical address and it never changes, right? One, two, three, Pennsylvania Avenue is always gonna be there. And if I want to get to Pennsylvania Avenue from the United States or from Colorado, then I would follow a certain direction. So if I want to get to Pennsylvania Avenue from southern, the southern hemisphere, Mexico, I would follow the, a, a set of directions. But the address never changes. So that's like an absolute path. It's always the same. So on your computer, an example 
of this would be like C if you're on Windows colon slash slash uh, programs and files, um, users, Andrew desktop file.html. So this is an example. I'm going to tab that back once so it's all in one line. This would be an example of an absolute path. It's always the same, it never changes, and they always start with the furthermost back root folder. So in this case, it would be the C drive. They always kind of start with as far back as you can go. And if I want to open up this file, no matter where I'm at on my file system, on my computer, this is the address to that file. It doesn't change. Now, that's in opposition to relative paths. Relative paths um, are like directions to an address. So using this same example, if I wanted to get to this particular location, um, instead of typing in an address, I would follow directions like go north, then east, then on road, state road, blah, blah, blah. So it would be like the directions to the address, okay? <clears throat> an example of that in code on your file system would be something that looks a little bit like this. It would be dot dot slash desktop slash file dot html. So this is a relative path to um, this address or this file or this location I'm trying to find. And just like absolute paths, um, they never change. Relative paths always change depending on your location. So for example, if I'm in the Western United States, to get to this address, the directions are gonna be different than if I'm in Mexico, right? So the path is always going to be different according to my location. So for example, on the file system, if I'm currently working on the desktop and I need to access this file, the relative path will be a certain path. But if I'm in the programs directory, I need to access this file, the relative path will be different. Whereas with absolute, it's always the same because absolute always starts with the root directory. Now, if that didn't make a whole lot of sense, don't worry. Um, it'll probably come to you as soon as you start working with web pages and paths, it'll, it'll kind of start to make a little bit more sense but you really kind of have to understand the difference between an absolute and relative path when you're working on the web. So I'm going to delete all these comments and now we'll kind of go back to our anchor tag and we'll start off with an absolute path for an anchor tag. Now, when I say an absolute path on an anchor tag, I'm referring to an absolute URL. So something like HTTP colon slash slash www.google.com. So the entire web address to a web page is what the absolute path is. That never changes, right? So let's save this now, come back and refresh our web browser, and let's click on that anchor text. And it should take me to google.com. And it looks like it's trying to, there it goes, google.com is loaded up. So that path worked. And let's click back. Now, oftentimes when you use an absolute path, you want to make it open up in a new window or a new browser tab. In order to do that, we need to add another attribute and another value, which is target equals underscore blank. And this is a little bit weird. This actually comes from the days of frames in HTML, but this particular attribute and value will make it so that when I visit that link, so I'm gonna save and refresh. When I visit this link, it actually opens up a brand new tab. You can see that. I have a brand new tab and my old page is still here. So that's kind of what that anchor tag does with target underscore blank. And I would say as a rule of thumb, anytime you link to a website other than your own, you'll always want to put this target equals underscore blank. That way, if the user happens to close that particular tab, they're right back on your website instead of getting lost and not remembering where they were at. All right, so um, now that we've covered the absolute path, which is probably the easiest, we're going to target relative paths next, which are much more difficult.